It is a busy Friday in the metro area. This is what's happening in Lentz Park right now. People are protesting after Portland police officers shot and killed a man. But first, we're going to turn our attention to a brush fire. This one broke out this afternoon in Clackamas County. It's for some evacuations northeast of Oregon City. Good evening. Thanks for being with us. I'm Dan Haggerty. We want to show you the area where this fire is burning right now. It started around one o'clock this afternoon near South Niber Road. People in that area are being told right now to get out. We want to go live to Catherine Cook. She joins us in Clackamas County. Catherine, what is the latest as of this point? Dan Clackamas County fire officials just notified us of what they're doing right now. They're continuing to evaluate conditions out there. Right now we are about a mile away from the center of the fire. At last check it was not contained. Uh, we have no idea how large the fire has grown to, but at the offset we know it was about three acres. I can tell you it's grown much bigger than that. Also, more than a dozen homes have been evacuated. Sky 8 video might take you uh, over over the top to give you a little bit better idea of what they're dealing with. Um, this started about one o'clock, as you said. Uh, firefighters are dealing with a trifecta of bad conditions here. High wind, high temperatures, and low humidity. It's one reason they implemented a burn ban earlier this week, um, because they've been battling escaped burns all week that have turned into brush fires like this one. Uh, at this point, they have initiated level three and level two evacuations for people in this area. Uh, those who need help are being notified to go to Oregon City High School. That's where the Red Cross has set up. And again, they're just asking people to stay away from this area as they evaluate the situation. No word yet on a cause, but again, they have these terrible conditions they're up against. They're going to be posting more on uh, developments later on, but again, at this point, they're just asking people to leave the area if they can. Dan, back to you. Catherine, appreciate the report. Let's talk to Matt Zafino now for a second. You're, Catherine brought up the conditions several times, dry, very warm, and it's April, so it, it does feel a little bit early to be talking about fire season, Matt. It is early. Um, we have seen this happen in recent years where we've had brush fires in March. Uh, seven years ago, we actually had a red flag warning in January. But regardless of that, this is early and this is not going to be the beginning of fire season that runs continuously through summer. We will eventually get some rain again, but not in the next week. Look outside right now. It's clear as a bell and it is warm. 78 degrees. 15% humidity, but the key here is the wind. That's what differentiates today from yesterday and today from tomorrow is that we've got the stronger winds going on today. And that, of course, can make fires spread erratically, fast and dangerously. And that's why we've got the red flag warning. Look at these humidities, though, too. 14%, 17%, 15%. The only part of the state that's not seeing, you know, humidity in the teens is the southern Oregon coast. And the reason for that is they've got some fog and low clouds. Well, we've got this red flag warning for the Portland area, the entire Willamette Valley, and out to the central Oregon coast because this is where the winds are. Notice where it's not. Not in southwest Washington, not over or east of the Cascades, and not even over on the north coast. It's where we're getting the wind in concert with the low humidity and the high temperatures for this time of the year. And those east winds do extend offshore. We've even seen 80 degree weather at the beach today. Now, the fire that Captain showed us is not the only one. There's another one here northwest of Bend. That one big enough to produce smoke that's crossing the Cascades, and that is visible not only on the satellite imagery, which is impressive enough, but also from our sky cam up at Timberline. That's the Three Sisters obscured by wildfire smoke at this hour as it's crossing the Cascades. So for Clackamas County tonight, the winds out of the northeast up to 30 miles an hour, but up on the ridges, the gusts will reach 45 miles an hour. Humidity 10 to 20 percent. The winds will ease tomorrow except in and near the gorge. So this is a short duration east wind event. Unlike last fall, things will begin to get a lot calmer tomorrow afternoon, Dan. Got it, Matt. Thank you so much. Talk to you again soon. Meanwhile, the other big story that we're following today is an officer killing a man this morning at Lentz Park in southeast Portland. It led to some very tense moments afterward between police officers and protesters following this shooting. Christelle Kumwe joins us live now in Lentz Park. Mark and Christelle, can you tell us kind of what happened, what we know at this point? As of right now, the crowd is spinning out right behind me. They are no longer blocking traffic, but there are still protesters here at the corner of Holgate and 92nd. That's at Lentz Park. And earlier today, a section of the park was closed off after police shot a man 
There was a massive police response and we saw dozens of units from different agencies out here. However, as of right now, it looks like many of them have left. The call came Friday morning. Officers went to Lent Park to check on a report of a white man pointing a gun in the park. The officers arrived uh, and they contacted a person in the park related to this call. Uh, at some point during this interaction, both less lethal and lethal force were deployed by the officers. Police later specify that two officers used 40 millimeter less lethal rounds and one officer used a gun. Acting Chief Chris Davis says the men received medical attention but died at the scene. This is never the outcome that we want when our police officers go to any kind of a call. Uh, and certainly these are very traumatic events for everyone involved. This shooting happened in a neighborhood where Portland just launched the street response team. The goal is to avoid sending police to situations where someone might be having a mental health crisis. We asked Acting Chief Davis about that. Based on what I know of the call for service that we received, this would not have fit within the protocols to dispatch them. This, this would not have been one of their calls. Detectives are currently processing the scene for evidence and interviewing witnesses. Investigators will be interviewing the officer within 48 hours. Now we are told that the officer involved is an eight-year veteran of the police and he will remain in, on administrative leave until the end of the investigation. Now we are expecting more information to be released in the next few days and that would include names. Dan? Got it. Christelle, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Meanwhile, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler did release a statement early today. He was at the scene this morning and he says in part, quote, these shootings are always traumatic for everyone involved and for our community, regardless of the circumstances. He goes on to say that he recognizes people are concerned or possibly angry and urges everyone to proceed with empathy and peace going forward. And we did see some of that anger today. The death of the person in the park was just kind of the beginning of how things began to unfold. Several protesters showed up to voice their opinion on this matter. We have Mike Benner reporting live for us right now on what was being said there tonight. Mike. Mike, are you there? Are you with us? I'm being told Mike is not with us. So uh, I'm not sure what happened to the live shot. We'll check in with Mike and his crew out there on the scene. You're seeing some video from earlier right now of protesters confronting police, Hello. blocking the street there. Uh, at one point, they tore, down the, uh, they tore down the police tape. We're going to check back in with Mike if we can. In the meantime, let's move on. Oregon Governor Kate Brown urged everyone who is eligible to get a COVID shot to do so as soon as possible. Her message comes at the same time that Oregon health leaders are warning us that fewer vaccines will be shipped to the state than what we expected. KGW's Pat Doris reports. Governor Kate Brown warned two weeks ago that COVID-19 was rebounding in Oregon and now she is sharpening that message. It's clear that this virus is persistent and it's stubborn. While we flatten the curve again and again, COVID will not surrender. But she reminded everyone the vaccines are making a difference and are the best way to shield ourselves and our community. Vaccines are the best way to protect yourself from serious illness and death. They are the best way to protect yourself from variants. And they are the key to unlocking the restrictions this pandemic has forced on us. When asked why she's not imposing more restrictions during this surge, Brown said the vaccine and Oregonians' common sense is doing enough for now. Oregon Health Authority Director Patrick Allen began his remarks by admitting the state needs to do more to get vaccinations to the Latinx community, saying the mass vaccination centers are not enough. And we're grateful for the health systems that have stood those up and operated them, but they're not sufficient alone. We need to refocus, reimagine, and redeploy our efforts to get vaccines out into communities that are hardest hit and most at risk. Thursday, community leaders criticized OHA, pointing out they make up 13% of Oregon's population, but have received just 6% of the shots and have 33% of the COVID cases. The OHA countered that they've given $45 million to community organizations that focus on priority communities like Latinx and are issuing $11 million more. As for the vaccine supply, it's looking worse than expected for the coming weeks because of the pause on Johnson & Johnson. The OHA at one point expected to be getting roughly 220,000 total doses per week, but without J&J, &J, it'll be closer to 154,000 per week. 
we'll continue to see tight appointment availability in many parts of the state for the coming weeks, at least until we know more about the availability of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. However, we still expect to have enough doses to vaccinate all Oregonians who are 16 or older before summer. Earlier this spring, Allen said everyone eligible should be able to get their first shot by the end of May. This new guesstimate is about three weeks later. Summer starts June 20th. In Southwest Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News.